Peace to the Lord, my brethren. Let's open the word of the Lord. In the New Testament. In Luke. Luke 7. From verse 11. Thus says the word of the Lord. Luke 7, after verse 11. Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up amongst us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. Amen, my brethren. We praise because we are thankful for everything that have already shown to us for the service for the praise, for the sanctification with the precious blood of Jesus. And we ask, Father, that in your word you will may bless your people, your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. My brethren, the word says that Jesus, he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. In a certain moment, he says the following, I have also so other sheep who are not, do not belong to this corral, and it's my desire to gather them. And he is the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life to the, to the sheep. And he comes to, to seek and save what was lo once lost. And the word of the Lord speaks, and the brother preached last week about this, speaking about a man, a centurion, that was with a servant, about to die, and he invited Jesus, he went to Jesus, and he sought Jesus, and his servant, there, even though he was far away, he was restored there to his health. And he then goes out of that place. He had performed that miracle there in Capernaum. And then he goes to a place called Nain. And the word says, my brethren, that when we read the entire New Testament, is the only time in which this name is mentioned. Nain. Nain was a town far away from Capernaum. And he travel about 10, 15 kilometers, about 10 miles. So Jesus had a purpose there in that city. And it is interesting that this was the first miracle of Jesus, or the first resurrection that Jesus performed. The first miracle was the miracle of the wine, the water being transformed in wine. But now I'm speaking about the first resurrection that Jesus performed. And the Bible says, my brethren, that in the case, and when we see the other resurrections, the resurrection of Lazarus, for example, it was a family, family that already served the Lord, a family that had already received Jesus in their household, a family that was loved by Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and their brother, their friend, Jesus' friend, Lazarus. And in another occasion, where was the, the resurrection of Tabitha? She was the daughter of uh, uh, a powerful man, the daughter of Jairus. The Bible says that she was sick. And when the father goes to seek Jesus, we can say that there was 
a delay of that trip because Jesus stops to operate a blessing of healing on a woman. They had a flow of blood, as we know. And when he, he arrives on the house of Jairus, the, the girl was already dead. And we know that Jairus was already a religious man. He already possessed the word of God. However, back then in Lazarus, the reason of death was what? Was the absence of the absence of Jesus. Jesus, if you were here, my brother would not have died. When we see, when we look into the life of Jairus in the house of Jairus, we see that the death was present there. For what reason? Because Jesus was absent. When Jesus goes to the house of Lazarus and he goes to the tomb, so when he arrives on that place, Li death becomes absent and the life becomes present. The same thing happens in the house of Jairus. The death was present and Jesus was absent. When Jesus presents himself, then death becomes absent. But one had a religion. He served God according to his own religion. And the other, the other household, Jesus was present. They received Jesus in their household. But in a certain point, Jesus became absent, so death was introduced there. But now, in this case of the womb of uh, Nain, she was a person. She was a, there was a village a town, was a widow. The, the Bible doesn't say that she had a, a religion. She probably followed Judaism, but the Bible doesn't mention this. There were people that, the Bible says, they were unknown. Their name is not even mentioned here, not even of their her son. But it is interesting that Jesus, he understood that he also needed to make a visitation on that city, on that look specific location. So he, so he goes, he moves from where he was and goes to the city of Nain. And when he comes close to the door of the city, and Jesus was not alone because his disciples were with him, and with him there was also a great crowd. So we see a, a multitude that follow the only begotten Son of God that is alive. But there was also another crowd that was follow the Son, that was dead. So we see here a, a difference between these two crowds, one that followed the living son and another one that followed the follow with the dead son. And the meeting takes place when they come close to the gate of the city because the people were they live in the city in order to to go to bury the dead and Jesus was going through the same path. He would go through the the cemetery in order to get to the city. So when Jesus was coming close to the gate, he saw that situation, that scene, and was very common uh, as the funeral entourages that the family members would go first in the entourage, and then the the tomb, then the cuff. And then the crowd where there were the people that cried, the, the people that played the flute. And also, according to the law of Israel, according to the Torah and the Old Testament, no one could touch on a dead because they would become impure. And it was a tradition, it was an obligation, and even uh, uh, on a, as a matter of politeness, that when they see a... Uh, uh, burial um, crowd and it was normal for everybody that saw it they would follow the crowd so according to the education that they received what should have happened with the crowd that was following Jesus they would have to wait until the the funeral passed and then all the crowd that was following Jesus would also follow the crowd that was following the funeral that would be their correct behavior that they should have. But the Bible says that Jesus didn't do this. When Jesus sees that a funeral procession, 
He says, the Bible says that he was looking for the, the woman, the mother of that son. She was a widow. She had already lost her husband, and now she lost her son. So she was a widow that was had no support. There was no longer any lineage for her or any hope. The Bible says that the children are the inheritance of the Lord. So her inheritance were, was already lost. So she had nothing else. No reason to stop crying, to stop suffering. And the Bible says that Jesus then looks to that woman and he was moved of great compassion. We just sang a song that speaks about the great love of God, right? The song that said that tears that run down your face, only Jesus can dry them up. And Jesus was there in that place to dry up the tears, wipe away the tears of that woman. Because Jesus, he was taken of great compassion, taken over by great compassion. And Jesus says, woman, please don't cry. Because the reason of that crying was the death of her son. She was crying there because she was suffering. She was anguished. She was sad with that situation. She already had lost a husband and now she lost her son. And Jesus comes to her and says, do not cry. And interesting that Jesus, later on, in the situation of Lazarus, Jesus cried. The Bible says that Jesus cried. Why? Because he, he realized what death is capable of causing in the life of the family members. So Jesus comes to that woman and says, do not cry, and the people that were around her would probably say, how can someone stop uh, a funeral procession, a burial, and goes to the mother of that young man that died and asks her to stop crying? What, a, what is that? We might be able to think in that way, but when Jesus comes, he already came with a solution. He comes to exercise in the life of those people there something that was extraordinary, something that had not gone through the, their own mind. The Bible says that the eye didn't see, that hear, never heard, and did not come to the heart of man are the things that the Lord has prepared for us. And the Lord had already prepared those things for that woman she didn't know yet. The son was dead. The crowd in the city also didn't know. But there was already a purpose from God. And that visitation, Jesus' visitation on that place. And when we see the word, it says that Jesus, that God visited his people. So the people from this community, of this city, they were also the people of God. They were sheep of his flock. That's why Jesus went there to seek the sheep that was lost. The situation was a situation of loss. It was a situation of defeat, anguish, sadness, pain, and suffering. So then Jesus comes there and he speaks with that woman. Do not cry. And then after speaking with that woman and giving an order to her for her not to cry, because Jesus was going to cause all her suffering, suffering to stop. There's an old song that we used to sing that says, All my pain Jesus take, took away, and my sadness he wiped away. And that's what Jesus was doing at that moment. He removed all the pain, all the, the tears, all the sadness from the life of that woman. And the Bible says, my brethren, that when he comes, he touches. He was forbidden to touch on the dead. If you touch, you would become impure. Because, But when Jesus touched on the dead, he makes a trans transfer. He removes death that was present there and places upon this dead upon that young man he puts life in there and only Jesus can do this people had already seen Jesus heal they had already seen Jesus transforming water into wine 
Jesus, they saw Jesus healing the mother-in-law Peter from her infirmity. They, they saw the blind to see and the leopard to be purified. The paralyzed to walk. But until that moment, no one has seen Jesus resurrect the dead. So that they knew that Jesus had power over infirmity and over impure spirits and power to restore and reestablish the health of someone. But now they were seeing that Jesus was resurrecting someone. And there is a text in the Bible that says there will come a moment in which the one who are in the tomb, they will hear my voice. And that's what was happening at that moment. They went to the tomb and uh, that young man, he hears, heard the voice of Jesus. And when he hears the voice of Jesus, he gets up. In the Old Testament, there was already signs of resurrection. The Bible speaks about Elijah that resurrected and Elijah that also performed a resurrection. But with a lot of effort, when you see the, the, the son of the Shulamite that dies, the prophet goes back and forth and lays down upon this the child seven times. All of this, of course, that was there. There was a revelation in that behavior. There's a prophetic meaning, but there was an effort. But Jesus here, no. He doesn't need to make any effort. He just uses there his word. He says, young man, I tell you, stand up. In the same way as him, when he speaks to Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. When he goes to the girl, to the little girl and said, little girl, get up. So now we see the power of the word of God. How much the, power, the word of God is powerful. With only a single word. Till only a single word and my, my servant will be healed, like was said last week. And here Jesus says a word and the dead is resurrected. So we see the power of the word of God. The power of Jesus upon, even upon the dead. The word says, my brethren, that the crowd that now was going to towards the tomb, the crowd that was carrying a, a dead son, the, the crowd that was crying, a crowd that was that was anguished. Now the same crowd, they were glorifying the name of the Lord. It stopped being two crowds, one following the dead son and another following the living son. It was now a single crowd. They were all following the same son, the son that was alive, the son Jesus. And that's the plan and the project of God, so that no one follow the dead son, but that the dead son may be resurrected and they will all be able to therefore follow Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father that is alive. He died, but resurrected afterwards. And all of this took place for what reason? So that would, there will be fear of the Lord. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the word, the people from that moment forward, from that resurrection, from that miracle on, they began to fear the Lord. And the Bible says, Fear the Lord and give Him glory. And that's what those people were, were doing. When Jesus introduced Himself, the miracle took place. People received fear from the Lord and began to glorify the name of the Lord. And the Word says that and fear came upon all and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen upon amongst us risen up upon amongst us. A great prophet, a prophet from Galilee, the prophet, the greatest of all prophets, the prophet Jesus, the Son of God. He has risen. He is standing up. He is rescuing you, rescuing you. And He's everywhere to rescue us, to rescue everyone that has at this moment gone through anguish, sadness, suffering, and adversity. A few pleaded. 
a few even went to Jesus. And here, Jesus, he went to that place. Nobody called upon him. Nobody asked Jesus to get there, but he went. You know, you know why? Because Jesus, he loved also those people. And at this moment, Jesus has gone. He has been everywhere to resurrect, to bring peace, comfort, refreshing, hope, healing, deliverance, salvation, so that man will be able to understand that only the Lord is God. Only Jesus is the only mediator between God and man. Only Jesus, only his presence can bring life to people. We see that all those people that died, their problem was the same. The absence of Jesus. The absence of Jesus in the house of Lazarus. The absence of Jesus in the house of Jairus. And also the absence of Jesus in that community. When Jesus present himself on, on all three places. The ones who were dead, the ones who were dead there, they were resurrected. The lack of hope stopped existing. Because now Jesus was present. And Christ in us is hope of, of glory. is hope of eternity. And then Jesus uses the greatest example, which is death. So when you die, that's it. There's nothing else that can be done, right? But Jesus says that Whoever believes in me, even if that person is already dead, will live again. And that's what he was doing there. So the prophet rises up amongst us, am among us, Emmanuel, God with us. When he gets up, he goes to visit. He, and God wants to visit us every day, every hour. Even if we don't plead, to him. He still comes to visit us. He comes to restore and reestablish and to bless our lives, to wipe away the tears from our eyes. Because God is love. And he loved us in such a way that he sent this Jesus so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And that's the desire of the Lord, that nobody would perish but that everyone may find in Him, in Jesus, resurrection and eternal life. Amen. Let's sing a song to the Lord, and then we'll hand the word to Pastor Ronilda. Uma voz me basta Na hora da tristeza e dor Só uma voz me consola É a voz do meu Senhor Ele tira a escuridão Ele faz nascer a luz Ele dá solução Revelada em Jesus Só uma voz me basta Na hora da tristeza e dor Só uma voz me consola É a voz do meu Senhor Ele tira a escuridão Ele faz nascer a luz Ele dá solução Revelada em Jesus
Ele tira a escuridão Ele faz nascer a luz Ele dá a solução Revelada em Jesus Ele tira a escuridão Ele faz nascer a luz Ele dá a solução Revelada em Jesus Amen, my brethren. Peace of the Lord. Let's pray, bring the service to close. And it's good to rem remember the, remind the brethren that we live uh, a difficult moment here in the United States, uh, a moment of turbulence in the political side, this transition of government. So we need to intercede to the Lord so that everything goes according to the will of the Lord. No leader, nothing happens that would not have the permission of the Lord. So we know that, that everything is under the control of the Lord. So we need to pray to the Lord so that this change of government may be done with peace, with security, and that there may not be any harm in any public place or any death, and especially in the churches, especially to the servants of God. So we as servants, we need to be praying to the Lord for the Lord to give a blessing also in this transition of government that is going to take place this coming Wednesday. So we have a couple of days for us to be fasting and praying so that we may once again see the hands of the Lord taking care of us, the church, of the people, so that once again we may glorify the Lord. Amen. Let's pray, bring this service to close, and after the final prayer, if anybody desires an assistance, we are making ourselves available to help in whatever you might need. We need also to pray on behalf of our brethren who are sick, the life of Marcelo, the family of Cassio, and a few others that we have been praying for, so that the Lord may give a blessing, the life of David and family, so a couple of uh, family members that need intervention of the Lord in the physical side. If I have forgotten someone, uh, my brethren, forgive me, but let's pray for everyone, especially to the ones who are going through this moment of pandemic, being afflicted by it. Amen. Lord God, we want at this moment glorify your name for yet another week, Lord, that has begun. Because we know that once again, the hands of the Lord will be laid upon us. And we ask, Lord, that you continue protecting, preserving our physical health as well as our spiritual health. Give us, Lord, another week of victories that we may be able to be victorious this week, Lord. Glorify your name. And that we already pray on behalf of Wednesday the, on this change of government, we ask that you may, Lord, give in harmony and operating peace, removing, Lord, every action of, the, of evil action and anything that does not belong, Lord, to your glory. We ask that you may, that it may be a transition, Lord, with harmony, where, once again, we 
will be able to see the operation of the Lord on our behalf. Save the service in adoration to your name and give us a week of rest in your presence, is the prayer that we say, in the name of Jesus, Amen. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Just a little uh, announcement. This coming Saturday, 23rd, we're going to have a special event with everyone, a seminar. So I ask the brethren, the ones who can, to reserve this day. Going to be done through YouTube so the brand can watch from home. Seminar, I believe, is going to be the beginner's class. So let's pray so that we may go back to the doctrine, especially what is taught in the, the beginner's class, which are basic classes. Sometimes we forget, but when the Lord give us this opportunity to once again watch beginner's class, the Lord renews, causes us to remember our first experiences that we had when the Lord brought into this church. So the ones who can, they can invite people that they are not believers. If they want to watch, it's open for everyone. And peace of the Lord Jesus, the brethren can open up their microphone and greet everyone. If you need a prayer, just state it and we'll give you assistance. We're going to pray for you, Hannah. Pai Senhor, irmão, Senhor, 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 Senhor,